Installing Python is super easy. You go to python.org, downloads, and then what you'll find here is just a button to download Python 3.8.2. Now, this is easy until you're like, oh, well, I need a different version. Well, then in that case, you'll click on whatever system or platform you're on. In my case, it's Windows. And then you'll want to look for the stable release of the version you want. And then the next thing is you want the executable installer. That's the fastest way for the vast majority of you to install Python on your Windows. But then you'll see that there's, there's one with a 64 and one without a 64. So the question is then, which one do I grab? Well, if you do the Windows key and X, it'll pop up this window here and you'll click on the button for system. So of course it looks like that. And then after that, you'll then click on system info, which you'll see on the right hand side here. And then finally, you'll see right in there system type. In my case, it's a 64 bit operating system. Yours might be a 32 bit. If it's a 32 bit, then of course you don't grab the one that has dash 64. Now in my case, I want Python 3.8 and then the highest number after that. So if 3.8.3 is out or 0.4, grab that version. Um, so 3.8 is the key part here and also that it's stable, not a pre-release. So if you see RC in it or A or, or some sort of letter, then don't do it. Okay, so 64-bit installer, I'll go ahead and grab that, download it, might take a minute to install, open it, and of course you're gonna see something like this. Um, now, by default, I usually go into the custom installation and I wanna make sure that I have all of these features in there. PIP is definitely one that you're gonna to wanna to install. This allows you to install things like Python, uh, Python packages that is named like Django, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, Pandas, and, and many, many, many other Python libraries uh, that you might wanna use. Um, so let's go ahead and hit next. And then the location that you wanna install it. Well, I typically install it for all users, which puts it into the program files. Um, this often means that I have to type a lot more in the future, which is something we'll see. So I even put it in the root of the C, uh, the C drive. I don't know if this is necessarily something that is recommended, uh, but it is something that I do all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and also add Python to the systems environment variables. Uh, this is another thing that we will debug a little bit in a moment. But I'm going to go ahead and install that, and I get a warning saying, hey, do you wanna install this? Of course I say yes. Uh, and then I just download and install and let it run as is. So only a few configuration things that we're wanting to change there. The next is when we go into our start menu, what you'll probably see is Python 3.6 coming up as a start menu item. Um, and that's because and it's, it's an executable program, like you can actually run this program. Uh, and of course, once it's finished, I'll show you that and then we'll successfully install Python. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna be ready for a project. It's certainly not gonna be ready for virtual environment, at least in a user-friendly way or a developer-friendly way as we are slowly becoming, as we learn more and more about Python. So I'm gonna let this finish and we'll be right back. All right, my setup was successful. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out. I'll go into my start menu here and I'll click on Python 3.8. And of course, if I have to scroll down to find uh, the version I just installed, go ahead and, and click on that. And this is, this is the window that you'll see. Um, so all this means is that I have Python installed, uh, even if it's a little bit hard to see with the video, you'll see something like that, Python 3.8.2, and then those three marks there. So those three ticks, um, those are denoting Python, um, as we'll see a lot more as we work with Python. And now I can do actual Python code, like 10 times some other random number, and it'll actually give me a result there. Um, so congratulations, you have Python 3.8.2 installed on your system. Now using that method, we can install other versions of Python as well, 3.7, uh, 3.6, any of those versions are fine. But what we really need to do is figure out a version that's gonna work for the next step, which is actually activating our virtual environment.